I don't get it. I mean, what is so exciting about packaging? Um, you put the label on the bottle, and then you put the bottle in the box. <laughs> that was the response that I got from my then nine-year-old daughter when I told my family that I'd be starting a podcast about packaging. And let's be real honest here, everybody. A podcast about packaging? You'd be saying the same things. Like, really? That's what we're doing now? Podcast about packaging? <laughs> See, to most people, packaging is just a bottle or it's just a shipping box that you get from an online retailer or it's a piece of clear plastic and it's packaging some scissors. Now you need the scissors to open up the packaging, but you don't have them. Hence why you made the purchase in the first place. So you get out a knife and now you're afraid you're going to cut yourself. And so packaging is frustrating and annoying. And I'm with you on this. My journey into the packaging industry is not normal. Honestly, most of them aren't. In the two years that I've been able to be the co-host of the People of Packaging podcast, we have interviewed dozens of people across the world in this industry, but I've yet to meet somebody who got a business degree, became a licensed and ordained pastor, and then exchanged preaching for packaging. That's, that's me, that's actually me. <laughs> At first, this was really difficult. I felt like I was ignoring my calling, and so I remained a pastor in a voluntary role for a number of years while I worked in the packaging industry. About five years ago, these worlds collided for me, and I was faced with an opportunity. I could pursue my passion for preaching full-time, or I could stay in my profession of packaging. And then I had this light bulb that went off. It was not or. It was and. I began to see my job in the packaging industry as the medium to do what I had been called to do, which is to bring good news and hope into the world. I found my why. The packaging industry is huge. Allied Market Research estimates that by 2023, it will be a $1 trillion global industry. And when you really think about it, it makes sense. Take something like vitamins. Vitamins come in a bottle, they'll have a label and a cap and maybe a box. And that those boxes, they come in another box and they all needed raw materials to be made. But what you may not know is that all of that packaging and those raw materials, it needed packaging to get to the place. And all that packaging needed packaging. So your packaging needs packaging, which needs packaging. It's like packaging inception. However, this near trillion dollar industry has not been perfect. We have sinned in two major ways. Number one has been our contribution to global warming and number two, our contribution to global food waste. Now these two things have become an existential threat to both humans and humanity. And so we need to collectively repent and get to work. And here's the good news, we are. Unilever, in the middle of the global 2020 pandemic, announced a plan to label 70,000 products with a carbon emissions rating. This will give you, as a consumer, the ability to buy products not just based on availability or brand loyalty, but now also on environmental impact. And along with that, they pledged $1 billion to go towards climate initiatives like sustainability and circularity within packaging. Or Nike, who is transforming the sneaker industry. They launched a line of shoes this year called Space Hippies, which are made from trash. Quite literally, the sneakers that I'm wearing right now on this red dot are made from discarded packaging. Right? <laughs> Or Cotopaxi, who similarly uses reclaimed fabrics in so many of their products. But this certified B Corporation also uses the HIG index to measure and track sustainability efforts throughout all of their supply chain, including, you probably guessed it, their packaging. Or Young Living Essential Oils, who as part of a corporate directive, a five by five plan, has, has a goal, a pillar, to drive sustainability throughout all of their packaging as they drive to become a zero waste to landfill facility by 2025. 
Now, this good news is not only happening with brands. They are partnering with research institutions and local municipalities to pioneer chemical recycling as a way to take our waste and create a valuable commodity. Imagine this, we are looking at a potential future where we can see landfills not just as eyesores, but as sources of value that we can mine. And speaking of mining weird things, there's a company here in Salt Lake City, Utah today that is mining the carbon that is in the atmosphere and creating cellulose from it. Cellulose is the basis for things like paper and some kinds of other plastics and packaging. So they're pulling CO2 out of the air and leaving trees, which are normally used to make cellulose, planted in the ground. Paper made out of thin air. It's amazing. Now these issues go far beyond just brands and technology. The problems and solutions with the packaging industry also impact people on a daily basis when it comes to food waste. The Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations estimates that in 2019, 33% of all food that was made to be consumed by humans ended up in a landfill. The economic Im impact of this was massive, $2.6 trillion. Now this is a big problem and one that won't only be solved by packaging. However, the University of Alabama, they found that in 2019, $5.7 billion worth of fruits and vegetables just in the country of India were wasted because of improper cold chain packaging. Problems like this are impacting people who need food the most. They're driving up costs and they have a horribly negative impact on our environment. If the packaging industry can come together and solve just 25% of these problems, we will drive down costs, decrease carbon emissions, and create enough available fresh food to feed every human on the planet. And you should be excited because in August of 2020, there was something formed called the Coalition of Action to end global food waste. This coalition was signed by the CEOs of 14 different companies, including Walmart, Tesco, Nestle, and General Mills. Another exciting thing is that all of this change is happening because of younger people. Millennials and Gen Z are willing to spend 10% more on products and services that they believe have a positive environmental impact, according to a recent Forbes article. But no matter your age, I want you to join me in holding these brands accountable for the decisions that they make and the commitments that they make and continue to apply pressure. Please vote with your ballots, but every day you can vote with your dollars. And I also want us to collectively have hope for the future. I live in this hope with you because I'm not just a packaging professional or a podcast host, or even a pastor. I'm a father to five children, and I am a husband to a wonderful wife, and I have hope for that day in the future. 20 years when I can stand out, breathing in the crisp, clean Utah air with my once skeptical daughter, and I can look at her and say, do you remember when you thought packaging was boring? We are living in a better world today because thousands, tens of thousands of people chose to believe that packaging is awesome. You see, packaging, it's not just a box. It's not just a label. It's not just a bag. And it's certainly not just annoying. Packaging is a great industry full of incredible people, these silent saints called packaging professionals who every single day show up to work, innovative and looking towards the future where we can say definitively, we are feeding every human on the planet and we have fixed the environment. And if you ask me, well, I say that sure sounds like some good news. Thank you.